Note to learner, this video provides content that will be hosted on the Ginny May LMS in the near future. In this video, you will not be able to interact with screen content to include selecting pop-ups, launching resource hyperlinks, and answering knowledge check questions. Nonetheless, you will be presented with all of the content presented in the interactive e-learning training. Though the audio narration may request that you select items or buttons on the screen, please pause the video to read the content and then select play to continue with the video. When the video advances to a knowledge check, please pause the video and try to answer the question in your head. Select play to see the correct answer or answers to the question. The PNI and the FIC changes and the step downs and the different steps that we need to do. So if at pooling, a loan has a payment change or step down with a FIC adjustment at the specified date, you, the user or the issuers is expected to add and display the information in MFPDM. Once the payment date is added, and the pool has passed the business validation or business rules. Again, you, the issuer, will submit that pool to your custodian for certification. The data is then entered and displayed on MFPDM, or the data that is entered in MFPDM is only used to satisfy the issuance of the pool. This data does not flow downstream to update the other Jenny May systems. Now, each issuer, um, you will need to take note of the change date and follow the appropriate steps to ensure that this payment change is captured within the Jenny May RFS system correctly and updated in a timely manner. The steps to make changes to the PNI or the FIC. First, the issuer, you, must notify the multifamily division that there will be a FIC adjustment on the pool or your loan. The notification should begin at least two months before the anticipated changes and should provide the uh, promissory notes with the official notifications. Once that notification is reviewed and approved by the multifamily division, an email is prepared and then is sent off to the pool processing agent to the bank to update the new FIC in the appropriate systems. We call it the new pool processing or short for NPPS as well as the multifamily database. Now check your understanding. Next here we have an example of the MFPDM loan section with the non-level payment section where you would add the adjustment date. And in this section, you would add the non-level payment schedule by entering the payment change date, the security rate, the interest rate, and then the PNI. So these data will be entered, and this is an example of how it looks in our MFPDM system. We do two sweeps a day. We do a sweep at 2 p.m. and then another sweep at 9 p.m. What happens, any pools that's out there with the status of certified, that's when we'll download that pool. And the first section here talks about certified pool slash loan package. Don't worry about loan package because this is multifamily, so you don't have to deal with loan package. Pool certified prior to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time will be considered one day processing and may be delivered for settlement the next business day. So the way we have it with DNY, with Jenny May, anything that says certify, we process. Process means that pool comes out on our system. It goes through another set of checks just to make sure everything is okay. It checks for your commitment. It checks sure that the pool number does belong to you. And of course, if any discrepancy, we'll reach out if commitment authority is an issue, then we'll reach out to your AE and then they'll do the due diligence to get those commitment in so your pool can be issued. Although we say next day delivery is a possibility that your pool is not scheduled for next day. 
but as part of our contract, anything that comes in with a status of certified, we must release. That we call that release. We do a release at 4 p.m. So all the necessary information can go to the Fed. But what the Fed will do at that time, if your pool is not scheduled for tomorrow and it's scheduled for September 8th, then they'll hold that security and make the delivery on September 8th. And another thing, just in case your investors are not looking for that on the 8th, they had another date, then that information that was sent will come back to the Fed saying, DK, do not know. And then we'll have to go through and get in touch with you as an issuance saying this we sent out this information, but it came back, do not know, because it could be a mix up with the delivery dates. So you just want to be careful of that. So we download at 2 p.m. And we also download at 9 p.m. Anything that is out there with a certified status, we download at 9 p.m. And that will consider a two-day processing. We'll do a settlement in two days. That means... 9 p.m. tonight, but we'll deliver most likely on Monday if it was a regular day because we're going to do our due diligence and release all those pools on Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. Just want to also let you know there's a possibility sometime when pools are transmitted, issuers might be doing their final checks and they find out, uh oh, I need to delete a pool. And so, first, let's talk about the 12 noon. If at 12 noon or before 12 noon, you find out that you sent a pool yesterday and you want to make some changes, you have up until 12 noon the next day to, to delete the pool on your own. But if it's past the 12 noon time frame, then you'll need to get in touch with us at BNY Mellon, the customer service 1833 Gen May Help. And we'll request to send us an email to delete that pool. If it's after 2 p.m., then we also can stop that pool. But if it's after 4 p.m., that's going to be too late for us because that's when we'll send off our information to the Fed. So you just want to be careful. 12 noon, before 12 noon, you have the ability to delete the pool yourself. I know now in MFP, then we're not using the word delete anymore. We need to change the slide. We're actually using now recall because recall means the pool that was submitted to the network, you're bringing it back so you can make changes. Delete now in our MFPDM world means you're taking that pool off the system. So we need to change those terms so we are up with the time. So you can delete on your own up to 12 noon. After 12 noon, pools can be deleted between the hours of 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. by the pool processing agent. That's us. So we're going to ask you, as I said earlier, to send us an email with the pool number and with your request to delete a pool. Once a pool is deleted, of course, we'll send you back a response. Send the pool was deleted. You should be able to edit and make your changes, apply your edits again, and resubmit. This is the calendar out there on the GenMail website that I think everybody actually in process, it's not very clear there, but... If you're an experienced user, issuer, you'll know that this calendar is supposed to be your guide because you have the investor reporting dates on there that you should follow to meet your requirements. And you have also the processing, new pool processing dates that will help you meet your deadlines and set up your pools in an appropriate time. So you'd meet what the investor requests in terms of that we have the cutoff for certain pool types. So you just want to follow that and, and maybe keep this close by you if you don't actually look through it every time you, you'd have to go on the website. So just want to mention the, the Genome website information out there on the pool the calendar. Now check your understanding. Ginny May issuer support, we are not allowed to give permission to change any loan terms in RFS. Issuers must notify the multifamily team at least 30 to 45 days prior to the effective change date. Okay, and once notice of that scheduled change is received, the multifamily account executives, they will then request updates 
to the multifamily database and mainframe. Please notify your multifamily team at least 30 to 45 days prior to that change. Let's walk through an example of a scheduled FIC change effective with the September 1st payment. First, the pool adjustment. In August, July activity is reported. During the first four business days of August calendar month, the adjustment to FIC and closing FIC updates must be entered on the pool screen. By updating the July reporting closing FIC, the data rolls forward and becomes the August reporting opening FIC. The calculated scheduled principal amount for August reporting should agree to the scheduled principal for the September payment. So as a result, the remittance on September 15th will reflect the updated payment amount. Now for the loan adjustment, once the August payment has been applied, issuers will enter the new FIC on the loan screen. By entering a new FIC, a critical pool 104 exception will generate. The difference of the FIC on the pool and the loan is what causes that pool 104 exception. But please note that pool 104 exception will remain for the month. So once that August payment has been applied, enter the new FIC on the loan screen. Now try this knowledge check. Let's look at some examples of correct adjustments to FIC reporting. In this example here, per the note, the new closing FIC is $143,033.47. The adjustment to FIC, $13,358.01. This is the difference of the opening FIC and the new closing FIC. Once the adjustment to FIC and the closing FIC are updated on the pool screen, a pool 104 exception will generate. On the loan screen snippet in that right corner, you'll see the FIC matches the opening FIC on the pool screen. Here's an example of the next month's reporting. In RFS, the opening and closing FIC on the pool screen now match the note. The loan level FIC and RFS also reflects the new FIC per the note, $143,033.47. You'll notice there are no pool or loan level exceptions in RFS. For our second example, per the note, the new closing FIC will be $32,000. On the poll screen, the adjustment to FIC is $8,396.73. This is the difference of the opening FIC and the new closing FIC. Once the adjustment to FIC and the closing FIC are updated on the poll screen, a poll 104 exception will generate. Again, on the loan screen in the right corner, You'll notice the FIC matches the opening FIC on the pool screen. Here you see a next month's reporting again. On the pool screen, the opening and closing FIC and the loan screen FIC in RFS now all reflect that new FIC of $32,562.46 per the note. And you'll also notice there are no pool or loan level exceptions and RFS. Now check your understanding. And now that we've seen the examples of the correct way to make FIC adjustments in RFS, let's look at a couple incorrect examples. This is the first example. The RPB adjustment and the adjustment to FIC were made during the same month. This indicates that the scheduled FIC adjustment was reported in RFS a month too late. The adjustment to FIC 
should have been made during the prior month reporting in RFS. In the second example, the adjustment to FIC was not made timely. As a result, the scheduled principal was not calculated correctly. Here is the next month's poll activity for example two. The issuer is reporting an RPB adjustment due to the untimely FIC adjustment made during the prior month. In conclusion, where the note dictates an FIC change, please ensure that the multifamily account executives are notified 30 to 45 calendar days prior to the scheduled FIC change. When making adjustments in RFS due to the scheduled changes, on the pull screen, enter the adjustment to FIC and update the closing FIC. The following month in RFS, please ensure that the pull opening FIC and the loan FIC are correct. And remember, RPB adjustments should not be entered on the pull screen in RFS. Now check your understanding.